President Obama introduced a one marker soft six. When I got to Washington, I already had seen John uh, on television and uh, admired his career from afar. Uh, you know, I was, I think, familiar with uh, the extraordinary heroism that he had shown uh, as a Navy pilot and then uh, you know, surviving an unbelievable uh, hardship uh, as a POW uh, during the course of the Vietnam War. Uh, I had also seen how he had conducted himself uh, in 2000 when he first ran for president. And I think like many people admired the fact that uh, although he was a conservative and you know, had uh, very clear views about the limits of government, uh, he wasn't an ideologue and was somebody who uh, you know, occasionally would break ranks with his party uh, around issues that he thought was important. So, so I already uh, was an admirer of John's before I got to the Senate. Uh, and when I got to the Senate, I think uh, most of those uh, impressions were confirmed. Uh, I will say that you know, when I got to the Senate, uh, I think John's reputation for uh, occasionally not suffering fools uh, was uh, accurate as well. And you know, I think that, you know, the interesting thing about John is, is you know, when he thinks uh, he's right on something, uh, he's more than happy to let the other person know, uh, including his colleagues. Uh, but, you know, he's also somebody who uh, I think, you know, even in those early years uh, as a freshman, uh, always impressed me as, as caring deeply about the institution, uh, judging people uh, on the merits, not on who they were, uh, you know, what their status was, and uh, and somebody who you know, was fundamentally uh, of uh, of the kind of character that you'd want to see uh, representing the, the American people. I went through uh, probably the most grueling uh, presidential primary in American history. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was uh, the upstart running against Hillary Clinton, and it dragged on for a very long time uh, and was getting a lot of attention. Uh, and so when I came out of that uh, to realize that now I was going to be running against uh, a certifiable American hero uh, was a little daunting. Uh, and I think John had great appeal among independents. John. Uh, obviously had uh, the, the extraordinary biography. Uh, he looked the part and, uh, and had the experience of not just 18 years in the Senate, but having run uh, for president before. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the, the, the big disadvantage that John had was timing. Uh, you know, he's running uh, against some very strong headwinds. Uh, he had championed uh, the war in Iraq uh, and the need to uh, stay the course, so to speak, uh, at a time when the country had uh, soured significantly uh, on uh, the, the Iraq war. Uh, and then the economy collapses and you've got a Republican president. Uh, and I think by necessity, uh, John did everything that he could to support uh, President Bush's efforts, but it also meant that uh, he was in, in a tough position having to defend uh, what everybody could see was uh, an emerging crisis. So uh, I didn't know all that necessarily uh, at uh, the beginning of the summer of 2008 when uh, the, the general election essentially began. Uh, but I think that what uh, I always saw out of John during the course of that general election was him conducting himself uh, in a way that was uh, tough. He was a competitor, he wanted to win, uh, but he never crossed the line. I think he always was someone who uh, felt that there was a, a, a certain example that public figures should set in terms of how they treat other people, how they speak in public, uh, what were fair uh, attacks and what weren't 
and uh, and uh, I think he conducted himself with the kind of dignity that was consistent with uh, with his broader career. Well, yeah, Joe and, and uh, John McCain were close. Uh, John had relationships with a lot of uh, folks on the other side of the aisle and our former colleagues. Uh, you know, he was close to Joe. He was close to uh, Hillary. He was close to John Kerry. Uh, and uh, and so I think Joe's opinion, John, was consistent with what you'd hear uh, with everybody else, is that, uh, that John was somebody who was a fundamentally good man uh, and loved the country deeply and, and was fair. I think that you know, Joe, as my uh, running mate, um, ended up really taking the same approach that I did throughout the campaign, which is we weren't really running against John McCain. We were running uh, for uh, a, a new direction for the country. And uh, you know, if, if you look back on that 2008 campaign, you know, really the, the issue was not personal. Uh, the issue had to do with some broader visions and what uh, the parties at that stage represented. Uh, and, and so in contrast to some political campaigns and presidential campaigns uh, that we've seen, uh, it, it wasn't uh, a matter of uh, questioning John's character. He didn't question mine. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the way that both sides, uh, I think, conducted that campaign for the most part. Yeah, I, I did see that, and I thought it was uh, one of John's finest moments uh, as a public figure. Uh, not because I was self-interested uh, in, <laughs> in what he was saying, uh, but because you know, what you rarely see in politics is uh, elected officials standing up to the passions and biases of their base. That's true on the left, that's true on the right. It's a hard thing to do. Uh, the easy thing to do is to uh, either go along with what uh, your constituents are saying or to sidestep the issues. Uh, and for John to um, in, in an environment in which at that point he was already uh, having an uphill battle, uh, where the energy of the party uh, was being captured by his vice presidential nominee, Sarah Palin, and it was a much more red meat, populist, uh, angry tone. Uh, for John in the middle of that to say, you know, hold on a second, uh, we don't demonize each other. We're all Americans. We're all on the same team. We can have profound disagreements without uh, impugning uh, the, the character of the people uh, that we're running against. Uh, I, I thought was uh, an indication of, of who John fundamentally was. Um, I never, in all my interactions, and you know, we had some tough interactions uh, both before I was president and after I was president. Uh, but I never saw John uh, treat people differently because of their race, because of their ethnicity or religion, uh, I never, or gender. I, I never saw uh, John um, engage in the sort of xenophobia or uh, nativist impulses that uh, sometimes uh, we've been seeing in our politics. Uh, and, and that wasn't a put on. You didn't get a sense that that was something that he actually felt but had to hide. Uh, you know, John, I think, took people uh, on the basis of who they were. And, uh, and he was an equal opportunity. He had an equal opportunity temper. <laughs> you know, if, he, if he got mad at somebody, it didn't matter who they were. Uh, you know, he'd, he'd holler at them. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I never felt as if um, John was willing 
uh, or inclined to tap into some of the you know, darker forces in American politics. And, and uh, you know, that's uh, something that I've always deeply admired about him. Yeah, I took the time to, to watch it because I thought it was important to hear what a uh, worthy opponent uh, had to say in summation uh, of the campaign he had run. And he could not have been more gracious. Uh, he could not have been more generous about uh, wishing uh, my administration well. And uh, I think it was uh, a capstone to uh, a race well won. The first couple of years of the presidency, uh, John's in the minority in the Senate, uh, and unfortunately, uh, the polarization uh, that has become all too familiar in, in Congress uh, had already set in. Um, but we're in crisis mode because the world's collapsing, uh, the financial system's frozen, uh, the auto industry's about to go belly up, and so we're running around putting out fires, trying to move uh, initiatives forward, uh, and we've got two wars going on. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, John, as a member of the Republican caucus, uh, was a consistent critic of my administration. Uh, but we'd meet on occasion. He'd come over and we'd have a, a conversation. And uh, I think where John w was most passionate was uh, with respect to uh, foreign policy. So we had been on different sides of uh, the Iraq war. Uh, not only was I opposed to it, but by the time I got elected, we'd been there five years and I thought it was important for us to uh, begin a gradual withdrawal. Uh, John uh, did not like the idea of having a timetable. Uh, he thought that that would uh, potentially reverse some of the gains that had been made. Uh, by the surge of forces uh, in 2006, 2007. Uh, but I think what he came to recognize once I was uh, in office was that uh, I wasn't an ideologue either. Uh, and uh, even though we continued to have some broad disagreements about strategy in Iraq uh, and Afghanistan, uh, we were able to uh, find common ground in making sure that uh, we were able to provide the support that our troops needed to carry out their missions uh, and uh, to negotiate a pathway uh, that was not too abrupt uh, and could result in uh, you know, renewed gains by uh, our adversaries there. The other area where I think John was uh, very clear was respect to how we fought the war on terrorism. Uh, he had been a strong voice in opposing torture in any form, obviously because of his history. Nobody had greater standing to describe just why it was that uh, it, it was a violation of our values and our ideals, but also ineffective uh, for us to uh, engage in any sort of uh, torture or what were termed enhanced interrogations. Uh, and so uh, having John's support as we tried to maintain uh, vigorous efforts to go after Al-Qaeda uh, and others that would do us harm, but to do it in the right way, uh, I thought was very important. Uh, and very useful. Um, now, as time went on, uh, after two years, you know, John's in the, uh, in the majority, uh, or, or at least uh, we, we lose the House and then eventually John's in the majority uh, in the Senate. Um, and by necessity then there are uh, negotiations on other domestic issues. Uh, I think one of John's finest moments was uh, the work he did around immigration reform. It's something that he had started when we were both in the Senate, before I was elected president, before we were running. Uh, he had had a consistent interest and belief in 
uh, creating a smart, effective, lawful, compassionate immigration system. Uh, and you know, so his leadership uh, in uh, the group of eight senators, uh, half Democrat, half Republican, uh, that came together and ultimately passed, uh, I think, a very sensible, comprehensive immigration reform, uh, was an example of the kinds of um, leadership uh, that, that John displayed while he was in the Senate during my presidency, but also, uh, I think, showed uh, his basic belief that uh, this is a country that's strengthened by uh, its diversity, that's strengthened by the energy and dynamism that uh, people from every corner of the globe bring to the United States. Uh, ultimately, we weren't able to actually get a bill on my desk to sign uh, because uh, the House Republican Caucus balked uh, in passing uh, the fine work that the Senate had done. Uh, but uh, I think John's voice in that uh, was something that uh, I consistently admire. I was very close to Ted Kennedy. Uh, he was uh, a, a mentor and supporter uh, when I got to the Senate. Uh, he had a very severe uh, sp spasm uh, uh, episode uh, on my inauguration day. And uh, that's when we first started understanding that uh, Teddy was going to be going through a, a tough battle. And uh, you know, when I heard about John, uh, obviously, uh, that came to mind. Uh, I heard uh, uh, about John's ailment the same way that uh, I think most Americans did uh, through, through uh, news reports. And uh, I was fortunate to be able to uh, call him right away and just let him know that um, I thought he was uh, too ornery uh, to, uh, to give in to any sickness and uh, that I suspected he'd be around for a while. Um, you know, it, it, it was a good conversation in part because uh, I think it so often we get caught up with um, the day-to-day -day and uh, the surface differences that we you know, uh, emphasize so much in our culture. And I think that conversation allowed me to say to him uh, what I'd said before, but uh, maybe um, took on a little extra urgency. Uh, and that is the degree to which uh, he, I believed he was a great American and had served this country with honor and uh, valor and, and uh, sacrifice. And uh, that I was grateful for that and I was grateful for uh, the relationship uh, that we had been able to develop and, uh, and that he needed to you know, uh, fight every step of the way as he always has. And, um, and you know, as, as is typical of John, he, he made some jokes and deflected uh, uh, any compliments, got him maybe a little uncomfortable. Um, but uh, but I'm, I'm sure that uh, there were a lot of people uh, that I was speaking for that day, uh, including, uh, you know, people who uh, had been on the other side of political fights, uh, but uh, never lost uh, a basic respect for uh, uh, for a guy who you know uh, has given his uh, all to uh, to the country that he loves. You know, John came of age in a post World War II era that I think so often uh, younger folks forget. Um, we constructed, after World War II, uh, a international framework 
and international institutions to promote a, a certain vision for uh, how nation states could relate to each other and how individuals uh, could interact with their governments. And it, it involved a, a certain core set of values of, of democracy and, and uh, liberty and human rights, tolerance and rule of law, uh, a belief in uh, trade and commerce between nations uh, rather than uh, zero-sum competition, uh, a belief in multilateral institutions that could work together uh, to uh, help promote the, uh, the peace. And John's part of that generation that helped to build those institutions and uh, helped to shepherd the end of the Cold War and the Berlin Wall coming down and new nations arising that uh, threw off the yoke of dictatorship and our military and diplomatic and economic and cultural efforts all led to unprecedented human prosperity and greater freedom than we had seen in the past. Uh, and I think John at this stage in his life uh, has the time to reflect and recognizes that that thing we built is worth defending. And uh, a lot of that progress can be reversed if we aren't tending to those ideals and those values. Um, you know, um, American leadership in the world, John, I think, recognizes and understands is not just a matter of us having the biggest air force or uh, the mightiest ships or uh, the latest weaponry. Uh, it has to do with people thinking we're more likely than not to do the right thing. Uh, that we're willing to do things that don't just involve our self-interest, but involve uh, the greater good. I, I think John recognizes that uh, for our democracy to work, um, we have to continually get involved. And it matters uh, that our leaders uh, try to be as honest as possible and as transparent as possible, and uh, that uh, our politics aren't designed to exploit divisions, uh, but are designed to elevate uh, debate and to uh, create a sense of a, a common bond around a common creed. So uh, you know, if, you, if you think of John's life uh, as, as the son of someone who had fought on behalf of uh, American freedoms and values, who himself uh, is part of uh, our armed forces that uh, defended that freedom, and uh, he himself going through the kinds of sacrifices he did, uh, who watched uh, the end of the Cold War uh, with us victorious, not by firing shots, but uh, because of the strength of our ideals, who uh, had worked on the international scene uh, to try to build on uh, the progress that had been made and who had lived through uh, a, a tumultuous period of time when uh, people who had been excluded from uh, American life were now included. I think it makes sense for him uh, to say, in, in the time I have remaining, let me make sure that I'm still fighting on behalf of, uh, of those things, that, that uh, my work is not yet done. Uh, and those, uh, the threats to th that progress, both internationally and domestically, uh, come from the outside, uh, come from very real enemies and adversaries that are dangerous and that we have to go after and defend ourselves from. Uh, but I think John understands they also come from the inside, uh, that um, there, there are ways in which we can damage ourselves by not living up to uh, the best version of America. Uh, and to the extent that he's uh, got a platform to articulate what he thinks that best version is, 
um, you know, that's uh, just one more uh, notch in, uh, in his service belt.